here full of Apaches. They bought every ranch building in sight. He had a brush with them last night. Says they're being stirred up by Geronimo. Geronimo? How do we know he isn't lying? No, uh, he's a shy hand. They hate Apaches worse than we do. Clear the wires to Lordsburg. That's Lordsburg now, sir. They seem to have something very urgent to tell you, sir. Well, well what's wrong? The line went dead, sir. What do you got there? Only the first word, sir. Geronimo. <laughs> and stretch your leg. I mean your limbs, ma'am. We're going to change horses here. Is there a place here where I can have a cup of tea? Well, yes, ma'am. You can get a cup of coffee at the hotel across the street there. Thank you, driver. Uh, you look a little tired. I'll be all right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Why, Lucy Mallory. Nancy. How are you, Captain Whitney? Fine, thanks, Mrs. Mallory. Why, whatever are you doing in Arizona? I'm joining Richard in Lordsburg. He's there with his troops. He's a lot nearer than that, Mrs. Mallory. He's been ordered to drive forth. Why, that's the next stop for the stagecoach. You'll be with your husband in a few hours. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Lucy. Sit down, darling. We'll have a cup of coffee. You must be tired from that long trip. Who is that gentleman? Hardly a gentleman, Mrs. Mallory. I should think not. He's a notorious gambler. Hello, Mink. Hi, Frank. Well, Marshal, I'm looking for my shotgun guard. Is he here? How was the posse, Buck, trying to catch the Ringo kid? Ringo? I thought Ringo was in the pen. He was. Busted out? Well, good for him. It's my guess the kid's aiming to get even with them plumber boys. Does that testimony sent him to the penitentiary? Well, all I gotta say is that he better stay away from that there Luke plumber. Why, gosh, Luke's run all of Ringo's friends out of Lordsburg. For well, the last trip there, I seen him hit a rancher on the head with the barrel of his gun, and, well, he just laid it wide open like a butchered steer. You seen Luke Plummer in Lordsburg? Yes, sir, Reed. Hmm. You boys take care of the office for a couple of days. I'm going to Lordsburg with Buck. 
I'm going to ride shotgun. Oh, gosh, if I could learn to keep my big mouth shut. Here's the payroll, Mr. Gatewood. You know, ever since I opened this bank, I've been trying to tell those people to deposit their payroll six months in advance. It's good, sound business. It's good business for you, Mr. Gatewood. Sir, there's your receipt, $50,000. And remember this, what's good for the banks is good for the country. Because you ain't paid your rent. Is this the face that wrecked a thousand ships and burned the towerless tops of Ilium? Farewell, fair Helen. Doc, Doc, can they make me leave town when I don't want to go? Do I have to now, go? Now, Dallas, don't you go making no fun. Do I have to go, Doctor? Because they say so. Now, Dallas, I've got my orders. Don't blame these ladies. It ain't them. It is them! Doc, haven't I any right to live? What have I done? We're the victims of a foul disease called social prejudice, my child. These dear ladies of the Law and Order League are scouring out the dregs of the town. Come on. They are proud, glorified dregs like me. You get going, Doc. You're drunk. <laughs> Two of the kind. Just of the kind. Take my arm, Madame la Comtesse. The tumbril awaits for the guillotine. Oh, wait till I get my badge, girls. I'll join you. <laughs> <clears throat> if ever you go east, brother, come out to our house for dinner. No one in all Kansas City, Kansas, sets a better table than my dear wife, Violet. Jerry. Yeah, Doc. Jerry, I'll admit as one man to another that economically I haven't been of much value to you, but suppose you could put one on credit. If talk was money, Doc, you'd be the best customer I got. <laughs> I'm leaving town, Jerry. Honest? Yes, old friend, and I thought you might out of memory of our many happy... All right, Doc. Just this one. Thank you, Jerry. Here's a man going on the stagecoach right. with you. He's an Easterner from Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Kansas, brother. Your health, Reverend. <clears throat> I'm not a clergyman. My name is Peacock. I'm a... He's a whiskey drummer. What? Well, well, how are you, Mr. Haycock? I... Peacock. Oh, tell me, sir, I know, I know, a familiar name and an honor name. I never forget a face or a friend. <laughs> Sepples? Hmm. <sighs> right. <clears throat> I want five dollars, Henry. Certainly, my dear, certainly. Well, what is it to be this time, my dear? A pair of I shoes? want to pay the butcher. Dinner's at 12 o'clock. Don't worry, my dear, I'll be there. I've invited the ladies of the Law and Order League. Apache Wells, Leesbury, Hartsburg. Uh, 
I'll take that, Dallas. Oh, thanks. In you go, Dallas, in a pleasant voyage. Take your baggage, Doc. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Surely, my kingo. Carry it with honor. I'll take it, Doctor. Oh, no, no trouble at all. No trouble at all. I'll carry it on my lap. Here we go. Here we go, Reverend. Mrs. Whitney, you're not going to let your friend travel with that creature. She's right, Lucy. And besides, you're not well enough to travel. It's only a few hours, Nancy. I'm quite all right. But you shouldn't travel a step without a doctor. There is a doctor, dear. The driver told me. Doctor? Doc Boone? He couldn't doctor a horse. Now, Lucy, darling, you must be very careful. Take good care of yourself. Oh, dear, I'm what? Lady, folks, right face and forward, please. There you go. Pleasant journey, Mrs. Mallory. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Like an angel in the jungle. A very wild jungle. What are you doing, Hatfield? Talking to yourself? You wouldn't understand, cowboy. You've never seen an angel, nor a gentlewoman, nor a great lady. I raised gentlemen. Well, so long, Buck. So long, Curly. Nice trip, boy. So long, so long, kid. Wait a minute. Hold up there, Buck. Grab a recover. Steady, girl. Captain Sickles asked if you deliver this dispatch in Lordsburg the moment you arrive. The telegraph line has been cut. Sure. We're going with you as far as the noon station at Dry Fork. There'll be a troop of cavalry there, and they'll take you on to Apache Wells. From Apache Wells, you'll have another escort of soldiers into Lordsburg. But you must warn your passengers that they travel at their own risk. At their own risk? Well, what's the trouble, Lieutenant? Geronimo. Geronimo? Well, then I Will you sit down? Of course, the Army has no authority over you, gentlemen. If you think it's unsafe to make the trip... This oh, stage oh. is going to Lordsburg. If you think it ain't safe to ride along with us, I figure we can get there without you, soldier boys. I have my orders, sir. And I always obey orders. Oh. Did you all hear what the lieutenant said? Yes, we heard. Well, me and Buck are taking this coach through, passengers or not. Now, whoever wants to get out can get out. Thanks. Courage, courage, Reverend. Ladies first. How about you, Dallas? What are you trying to do, scare somebody? They got me in here, and I'll let them try to put me out. Worse things in Apaches. If you'll take my advice, ma'am, you won't take this trip. My husband is with his troops in Dry Fork. If he's in danger, I want to be with him. <clears throat> you see, brother, I have a wife and five children. Then Hems, you're a man. Hems. By all the powers that be, Reverend, you're a man. All right, folks. <clears throat> Marshal, make room for one more. I'm offering my protection to this lady. I can shoot fairly straight if there's need for it. That's been proved too many times, Hatfield. All right, get in. We're late. Now, I'd trouble you to move over, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Close the door. Oh, Curly, we Get should... going, Buck. Oh, Bessie, Brownie, Bill! Farewell, ladies. Ah, sweetheart! Goodbye. Come on now, girl. <laughs>
there's anything I don't like, it's driving a stagecoach through Apache country. Funny catching Gatewood outside of town that way. I just took this job 10 years ago so I can make enough money to marry my Mexican girl, Julieta, and I've been working hard at it ever since. Bonnie, get over! Go! Marriage? Well, certainly. My wife's got more relatives than anyone you ever did see. I bet I'm feeding half the state of Chihuahua. Sweetheart! That seemed funny to you about Gatewood? Yeah, and then what do I get to eat when I get home in Lordsburg? Nothing but free holy beans, that's all. Nothing but beans, beans, beans. Bessie, Bonnie, Blackie, girl, now get along. Uh, excuse me, ladies. <laughs> Most quarters. <laughs> uh, warm today. Your wife made it warm for me, Gatewood. She was chairman of our farewell committee. <clears throat> Fine looking bunch of soldier boys back there. Always gives me great pride in my country when I see such fine young men in the U.S. Army. Anybody know where they're going? <clears throat> Brother, aren't you aware of what's happened? Happened? I, I don't follow you, Reverend. I'm not a clergyman. I'm a... My friend's a whiskey drummer. We're all going to be scouted. Massacred in one fell swoop. That's why the soldiers are with us. He's joking, of course. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, dear, no. I wish he were. It's that old Apache butcher, Geronimo. Geronimo. Nice name for a butcher. He's jumped the reservation. Down the war path. Geronimo? Why weren't the bastards notified? Why wasn't I told? We, we were told, Gabriel. Yes. Weren't you told when you got that message from Morsberg? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Of course, I, I forgot. Doggone it, they're bringing up her grandfather all the way from Mexico to live with us. I can't figure out how he got that message. Who, her grandfather? No, Gatewood. Sweetheart! He said he got a message. Sweetheart! The telegraph line ain't working. Sweetheart! It's Ringo. Yeah. Hello, kid. Hello, Curly. Hi, uh, Buck. How's your folks? Oh, just fine, Ringo, except my grandfather came Shut up. Shut up. Didn't expect to see you riding shotgun on this run, Marshal. Going to Lordsburg? I figured you'd be there by this time. No. Lame horse. Well, it looks like you've got another passenger. Yeah. I'll take the Winchester. You may need me in this Winchester, Curly. Saw a ranch house burning last night. You don't understand, kid. You're under arrest. Curly. Is everything all right, Marshal? Everything's all right, Lieutenant. Hope I ain't crowding you folks now. Oh, so are the Marys. Ready, 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 ready. Oh, Bessie, ain't Ringo a fine boy? I think so. Hey, you're just smarter than a trade rat. You knew all the time he was going to Lordsburg. Hey, reckon what he meant. He saw ranch houses burning. Patches. Patches. So you're the notorious Ringo kid. My 
friends just call me Ringo. Nickname I had as a kid. Right name's Henry. Seems to me I knew your family, Henry. Didn't I fix your arm once when you were bucked off a horse? Are you Doc Boone? I certainly am. Now, let's see. I'd just been honorably discharged from the Union Army after the War of the Rebellion. You mean the war for the Southern Confederacy, sir? I mean nothing of the kind, sir. That was my kid brother broke his arm. You did a good job, Doc, even if you was drunk. Thank you, son. Professional compliments are always pleasing. Yes, they are. What happened to that boy whose arm I fixed? He was murdered. Cigar. You're annoying this lady. Excuse me, madam. Being so partial to the weed myself, I sometimes forget that it disagrees with others. A gentleman doesn't smoke in the presence of a lady. Three weeks ago, I took a bullet out of a man who was shot by a gentleman. The bullet was in his back. You mean to insinuate... Sit down, mister. Doc don't mean no harm. Captain Mallory. I was told he was here. Well, dearie, got orders not to pull off to join the soldiers at Apache Wells. Well, that means we gotta go back. I can't go back. Now, look here, driver, you started this coach for Lordsburg, and it's your duty to get us there. And it's your duty, young man, to come along with us. It's my duty, Mr. Gatewood, to obey orders. I'm sorry, sir. Well, well if the soldiers go back, Lieutenant, then that means we all have to go back? My orders are to return from here immediately, and I can't disobey those orders. I think we can get through all right, Curly. Oh, now, don't egg him on, kid. I'm driving this here outfit, and, well, if the soldiers go back, so am I. I call this a desertion of duty. I'll report you to your superior officer. And if necessary, I'll take the matter up with Washington. That's your privilege, sir. But if you give us any trouble here, I'll have to put you under restraint. Now, don't lose your temper. Don't lose your temper. I'll tell you how we settle it. We'll take a vote. Inside, everybody. Come on, Buck. Oh, but Curly, I don't want to go. Now, you girls, set yourselves down. I'll get you some to eat. Now, folks, if we push on, we can be in Apache Wells by sundown. Soldiers there will give us an escort as far as the ferry. Then it's only a hoot and a holler into Lordsburg. Oh, that old mayor, we I got four think... men can handle firearms. 
five with you, Ringo. Doc can shoot if sober. I can shoot. I can shoot. Now, Miss Malray, I, I ain't gonna put a lady in danger without she votes for it. I've traveled all the way here from Virginia. I'm determined to get to my husband. I won't be separated any longer. What's your vote, mister? <laughs> Where's your manners, Curly? Ain't you gonna ask the other lady first? Well, what do you say? What difference does it make? It doesn't matter. I vote that we go on. I demand it. I'm standing on my legal rights. What do you say, Hatfield? Lordsburg? Four. You, Doc? I'm not only a philosopher, sir. I'm a fatalist. Somewhere, sometime, there may be the right bullet or the wrong bottle waiting for Josiah Bull. Why worry when or where? Yes or no? Having that philosophy, sir, I've always caught a danger. During the late war, when I had the honor to serve the Union under our great president, Abraham Lincoln, ah, and General Phil Sheridan, well, sir, I fought mid shot and shell and cannon raw. Do you want to go back or not? No. I want another drink. <laughs> That's five. How about you, Mr. Hancock? <laughs> Peacock. <clears throat> I'd like to go on, brother. I want to reach the bosom of my dear family in Kansas City, Kansas, as quickly as possible. But I may never reach that bosom if we go on. So under the circumstances, you understand, brother, I think it best we go back with the bosoms. I mean, the soldiers. One against. Well, Buck? I was... Buck says I. That's six. I'm voting your proxy, kid. You go with me. Ain't nothing keeping me out of Lordsburg, Curly. There sure ain't. Well, folks, that settles it. We're going through. Sit down, folks, and eat your grub. Come on, Buck. We'll change them horses. No, oh, but Curly, ain't we going to eat? We'll eat later. Oh. Here you are, folks. Food's on the table. Help yourselves. You got a long ride out of you. You ain't drinking, Billy. Sit down here, ma'am. I find you another place, Mrs. Mallory. It's cooler by the window. Thank you. Looks like I got the plague, don't it? No, no, it's not you. Well, I guess you can't break out of prison and into society in the same week. Please. Please. Have you ever been in Virginia? I was in your father's regiment. I should remember your name. You're Mr. Hatfield. That's what I'm called, yes. Why 
Why do you look at me like that? I'm just trying to remember. Ain't I seen you someplace before, ma'am? No. No, you haven't. Hmm. I wish I had, though. <laughs> I know you. I mean, I know who you are. I guess everybody in the territory does. Yeah. Well, I used to be a good cow hand, but things happen. Yeah, that's it. Things happen. And now they'll take you back to prison. Not till I finish a job in Lordsburg. But you can't. You're going there as a prisoner. All aboard for Apache Wells, leave. All right, folks, the horses are changed. We'd better get going. And Lordsburg, maybe. All right, get going, Ringo. Mrs. Pickett, tell Billy the buckboard is all ready. Let's get going. All right, Marshal, we're ready. All right, come on, folks, let's go. My compliments to your husband. Right. I still feel that we ought to go back to the soldiers. We've got to hurry if we want to have our son
How come you're taking this road? It's going to be cold up there. I'm using my head. Those breech crowd Apaches don't like snow. Maybe you'd like to, to sit next to me. I. You could put your head on my shoulder. No, thank you. How are you feeling, Mrs. Mallory? Is there any water? Ivor, canteen, please. Just a minute, Mrs. Mallory. I've seen this crest before. Isn't this from Greenfield Manor? I wouldn't know, Mrs. Mallory. I won this cup on a wager. How about the other lady? Thanks. No silver cups. This is fun.
seven hours from Dry Fork. Pretty fast driving, amigo. Get the folks a bite to eat, Chris, while we change horses. We're pushing right on to Lodgeburg. You come with the hot soldiers? Oh, we weren't as scared. We didn't see one Apache, did we, Curly? Where's the cavalry, Chris? Uh -huh. Where's the soldiers? There ain't no soldiers. Huh? Soldiers are gone. Where's Captain Mallory? Where's my husband? Where is he? You, his wife, I think? Yes, where is he? Did he go with his men? Si, senora. Little what you call a skirmish with the Apaches last night. Soldiers take Captain Morales to Lordsburg. I think he'd get hurt, maybe. Badly? Si, senora. I think so. Mrs. Mallory. I'm awfully sorry. If, if there's anything I'm I can... quite all right, thank you. A sick woman on our hands. That's all we needed. Oh, I feel kind of sick. Well, we're in a fine fix, my friends. It's a fine country we're living in. The Army has no right to leave a public place like this undefended. Looks to me like the Army's got its hands pretty full, mister. You Si, senor, I think. Call her. Yakima, don't start. Ringo, go in the kitchen and get some hot water. Lots of hot water, please. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Chris. Donde la cocina? Aquí está, kid. A fine member of the medical profession. Drunken beast. Coffee. Give me coffee. Black coffee. Lots of it. More, more. Ain't enough more. got this four. Black or stronger. Keep it coming. I know you'll have it coming out Come your on. ears in a minute. Get it down. I'll drink it down, Doc. Go on. Drink it down. Get it down. That'll Come make on. you feel better. All right, Doc. Isn't that drunken swine sober yet? He's doing the best he can. Well, hurry! Tamalo. Chin horn. Ay, pa. Fine. Thanks. Again. Sit down here, Doc. Keep the fire going, Chris. Plenty of hot water. This ain't your seat. Savages! That's my wife, Yakima, my squaw. Yes, but she's... she's savage. Si, senor. She's a little bit savage, I think. Ándale pronto, calentar agua. Para la enferma. Pronto. Something funny about this. That woman's an Apache. Sure, she's one of Geronimo's people, I think. Maybe not so bad to have an Apache wife, eh? Apache don't bother me, I think. Doc. All right. All right. All right,
al pensar en ti tierra en que nací que nostalgia siente mi corazón en mi soledad con este cantar siento alivio y consuelo en mi dolor ahora muchachos váyanse las notas tristes de esta canción me traen recuerdos de aquel amor al pensar en él vuelve a renacer la alegría en mi triste corazón. It's them, the Carols, they've run away. Yeah, with the spare horses. Coyotes give me the creeps. It sounds well. It sounds just like a baby. Black ape. It's a baby. <laughs> it's a little girl. It's a little girl. Well, I'll be doggone. Why didn't somebody tell me? Where's Mrs. Manry? She's going to be all right. Well, I'll be doggone. D did you know? Don't do that. Dr. Boone. boys. Three cheers for old Doc Boone. Hip, hip! Quiet. Well, we ought to be... Quiet. Mrs. Mallory. I know why you want to go to Losburg. I like you. I know your pop. She was a good friend of mine. If you know who in Losburg, you stay away, I think. You mean Luke Plummer? Luke, I can hang. All day together. I saw them. Is 
sure of that, Chris? Sure. I can tell you the truth. I know. Thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Say, you crazy if you go. I think you stay awake here. Three against one is no good. to make for the quarter now. My father and brother were shot down by the plumber boys. Guess you don't know how it feels to lose your own folks that way. I lost mine when I was a kid. It was a massacre in Superstition Mountain. It was tough. Especially on a girl. Well, you gotta live no matter what happens. Yeah, that's it. Look, Miss Dallas, you got no folks. Neither have I, and well, maybe I'm taking a lot for granted, but I watched you with that baby, that other woman's baby. You look, well, well, I still got a ranch across the border. And it's a nice place, a real nice place. Trees, grass, water. There's a cabin half built. A man could live there. And a woman. There you go. But you don't know me. You don't know who I am. I know all I want to know. There you go. Oh, don't talk like that. What are you doing out here, kid? Stick close to the reservation. Curly! Oh, Curly! Oh! Curly! What's wrong, Chris? My wife, Jakima, she ran away. When I went up, she was gone. The way you come busting in here, you think we... What? Excuse me, kid. Come busting in here, you think we were being attacked. You can find another wife. Sure, I can find another wife. But you take my rifle and my horse. Oh, I never sell her. I love her so much. I beat it with a whip, and she never get tired. Your wife? No, my horse. Oh. I can find another wife easy, yes. But not a horse like that. Mala Yakima. I knew that woman was a thief. I... What's the matter with you, Gatewood? My police. Where's my police? Which one of you got it? Here it is. I was using it for a pillow. I didn't think I told you to keep your hands off my things. Yes, sir. That squire of yours will find some Apaches and bring them back here. My wife, people don't bother me, I think. Don't bother me, I think. Chris, is this bar open? Sure, all the times in your scene. Good. Here you are, Duck. Well, what are you wasting time for? Let's make a break for it. We've got a sick woman to think of. You want her to stay here and be butchered with the rest of us? Why don't you think of somebody else for once? You only lie to me. Easy, easy, easy. Get the quiet, boys, quiet. We ain't been butchered yet. But you're right. We better get going for Lordsburg as soon as we can. Might be a good idea, Curly, if uh, Doc took a look at the patient. Yeah, and little Coyote. You'll join me, Doctor? <clears throat> no, thanks. Morning. Well, you're looking pretty chipper. up early, Dallas. She didn't go to bed, Doctor. 
I'm afraid she sat up all night while I slept. Oh, I slept a lot in the chair. Well, anyway, it was nice to stay awake and hold the baby. Hmm. Well, we've got to get you to Lordsburg, little coyote. That's what the boys christened her last night when she squalled. Little coyote. How do you feel? Oh, fine, thanks. I'm a little tired. Doctor, do you think my husband... Never mind him. The best medicine he can have is to see you two safe and sound. You just make up your mind you're going to get there. I have made up my mind. That's the stuff. I am going to get there. You need strength, so get all the rest you can. Dallas, you suppose you can fix up a little broth? She has already. Good. How about making some coffee for the boys? Now, you get some sleep, Mrs. Mallory. You all look so proud. I brought hundreds of those little fellows into the world. Once upon a time. And the new one was always the prettiest. Doc. Ringo asked me to marry him. Is that wrong for a girl like me? If a man and woman love each other, it's all right, ain't it, Doc? You're going to be her child. Worse than you've ever been hurt. Don't you know that boy's headed back for prison? Besides, if you two go in the Lordsburg together, he's got to know all about you. He's not going into Lordsburg. All I want is for you to tell me it's all right. Child, who am I to tell you what's right or wrong? All right. Go ahead. Do it if you can. Good luck. Thanks, darling. Ringo. Well, Doc? Oh, uh, both doing nicely. She's a real soldier's wife, that young lady. Good, good. Then we can leave immediately. Well, not for a day or so, if you want my professional advice. What do you mean, a day? Stay another day? Why? Where were you when the stork came last night, Gatewood? I refuse to allow Mrs. Mallory to travel until she and the child are out of danger. What do you mean, danger? Aren't we in worse danger here? <clears throat> I don't wish to intrude, uh, but I've had five children. I mean, uh, my dear wife has. And much as I dislike discussing it in this hour of our trial, I, I believe the doctor's right. Spoken like a man, Reverend. I say we ought to leave here before the Apache finds us. That's common sense. I wish you were ten years younger, Gatewood. Don't let my white hair stop you. Now, Curly, I haven't said a word. Will you shut up? Now, if we argue this thing out right, we can get somewhere. Let's all sit down and talk sensible. Come on, Buck, sit down. There's a young woman in the kitchen making coffee. She needs help. Thanks, Doc. Say, kid. How old were you when you went to the pen? Oh, I was going on 17. Most of the night. Wondering what you'd have said if Curly hadn't busted you. Guess you was up kind of late, too. Here you moving around. You didn't answer what I asked you last night. Look, kid, why don't you try to escape? There's a horse out there in the corral. Curly won't go after you because he can't leave the passengers in the fix like this. I gotta go to Lordsburg. Why don't you go to my ranch and wait for me? Wait for a dead man. I haven't got a chance. It was three against one when the plumber swore that you killed their foreman. We got just sent up. It'll be three against one in Lordsburg. Well, there's some things a man just can't run away from. 
How can you talk about your life and my life when you're throwing them away? Yeah, mine too. That's what you're throwing away if you go to Lordsburg. What do you want me to do? Would it make us any happier if Luke Plummer was dead? One of his brothers would be after you with a gun. We'd never be safe. I don't want that kind of life, Ringo. Well, I don't see what else I can do. Go now. Get away. Forget Lordsburg. Forget the plumbers. Make for the border and I'll come to you. Do you mean that? Yes, I do. Will you go with me, Dallas? Oh, I can't leave Mrs. Mallory and the baby. I'll come to you from Lordsburg. I swear it. Well, I'll have a rifle. I've got one. Here. I got it last night when they were all asleep. You mean you thought of this last night? Yeah, don't ask any more questions. Not now. Oh, gosh, Curly, there ain't no Apaches behind us. We can still go back to Tonto. No, I insist we go on to Lordsburg. What do you think, Chris? Geronimo, between here and Lordsburg, with my horse, I think. <laughs> my horse no, has doctor. gone. Oh. She has gone Quiet. astray with the sun. Quiet, Doc. This is a serious matter, ain't it? My dear Buck, if I have only one hour to live, I'm going to enjoy myself. Doctor, I don't begrudge you my samples. But now I you hush. Doctor, I've stood enough you for you. Now this is a serious problem, and I'm the only one that's talking sense. Now, Curly, we can get across that ferry. We'll be all right. Question is, what are we going to do about the lady and her baby? Doctor Boone has settled that for us, sir. And I demand respect for his professional opinion. Hatfield, Ringo, Ringo. I'll see you, wait. Look at them hills. Patches. War signals. Hurry up, Marshal. What's Hey, why don't they start? see any signs of them. They strike like rattlesnakes. If you hadn't insisted on waiting for her, we'd have been across the ferry by this time. You talk too much, Gatewood. Your threats don't faze me, Hatfield. You're nothing but a tin horn gambler. How would you like to get out and walk? You can't put me out of a public conveyance. Oh, now, gentlemen, gentlemen. Take it easy, Gatewood. We may need that fight before we get to the ferry. You wouldn't be much good in a fight, you jailbird. Oh, leave the kid alone. He's handcuffed. Gentlemen, please, let's not forget the ladies. Bless them. Let's have a little Christian charity, one for the other.
Harry, it's weird, too. Hatfield, stand guard over there. Where's the army? What's the soldiers doing? Harry, what can I do? Are the government surrounded with burning pillages? Hey, Harry! I need you. If you give me your word, you won't try to escape again? I'll give you my word. The Lordsburg. Get in the coach with them women. I give you my word. Gringo, do Alice! Huck, drive into the river up to the hubs. Ready, Betsy! Betsy! off the handle, Hatfield. My apologies, Doctor. No hard feelings, I hope. <clears throat> all in all, it's been exciting, but a very interesting trip. Has it not? Well, now that the danger's past, Mr. Peacock. And ladies and gentlemen, since it's most unlikely that we'll ever have the pleasure of meeting again socially, I'd like to propose a toast. Major? Gatewood? Ringo, your health. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir.
If you see Judge Greenfield, tell him his son. Haven't you safe, Lucy? Where's Richard? Is he all right? Oh, he's all right. Don't you worry. It isn't a bad wound. We'll take you to him immediately. Where's the baby, dear? I'll take the baby. Is there ever anything I can do for... I know. Orderly. Manos. Si, patron. Un momento. Cash in. Hi, Miss Dallas. If you ever come to Kansas City, Kansas, I want you to come out to see us. Oh, thanks, Mr. Uh... Peacock. All right. 
folks. You're Come on. Unload. Unload. Here you are, Doctor. Will you sign this? Well, Lordsburg. Thank you. And you, Doctor. There you are. Thank you. Well, kid. Curly, uh, how long will they give me for breaking up? Oh, about another year. You know where my ranch is? Yeah. Will you see that she gets there all right? Dallas. Yeah. This is no town for a girl like her. Will you do it? Sure. Thanks. All right, Marshal. Get my man through all right? I don't need them. If you don't want to lose your prisoner, Sheriff, you'd better take care of him yourself. What's your name, mister? My name is Gatewood, Ellsworth H. Gatewood. Oh, Gatewood. You didn't think they'd have the telegraph wires fixed, did you? You are not here. Gatewood, thank you. Wait a I meet you back here in 10 minutes. I gave you my word, Curly. I ain't going back on it now. My ammunition. I lied to you, Curly. Got three left. Good night, kid. Is this where you live? No. I gotta know where you live, don't I? No, don't come any further. You open a crazy dream. I've been out of my mind just hoping. Say goodbye here, kid. We ain't never gonna say goodbye. I have that. You mean a shotgun? Shotgun! Lou, Lou, please! 
down. Well, kid, I, I told you not to follow me. Dallas. I asked you to marry me, didn't I? I'll never forget to ask me, kid. That's something. Wait here. Come along! Uh, uh, Ringo said he'll be passing this way in six or seven minutes. Take that shotgun, Luke. You'll take it in the belly if you don't get out of my way. I'll have you indicted for murder if you step outside with that shotgun. We'll attend to you later. do that again. You will, Billy. You will. <laughs> I missed him at four feet.
kid. Thanks, Shirley. Curly's gonna see that you can get to my place across the border. Bye, Dallas. Bye. Maybe you'd like to ride a ways with a kid. Please. Blessings of civilization? Yeah. <laughs> Doc? I'll uh, buy you a drink. Just one. 